everybody's going to be jumping back uh, on the tennis court, softball field, golf course, and we're going to put our body in a position where maybe we're not prepared yet after sitting all winter. So can you give us just, first of all, a list of the, the, the injuries that you see here when spring begins? Yeah, so you think golf, you think tennis, paddle sports, softball, baseball, so a lot of rotational type sports that we're working with here. So that requires a lot of stability in the spine, a lot of dynamic stability from the core. So that's the one thing that we always really want to address with all of these sports. Because when we're sitting on the couch, we're not doing this, Not are so we? much, not yeah. so much. So that's a big thing for golf especially, is that we got to make sure that with the core, we're thinking about both front, side, and back that we're strengthening. A lot of people think core and they just think, I got to have six pack abs, and that's not the case. So making a 3D structure really helps with that. And when we think about softball, baseball, where we're getting a little bit more overhead now, we want to make sure that the rotator cuff is firing correctly and that we're getting a lot of stability in the shoulder for that. Let's start with just some simple exercises here and we'll tackle the rest in other segments. Yep. Okay, starting with back. So like you said, you've been sitting all winter, things are tightening up. First things first, let's loosen up these hip flexors that we've just been in a shortened position to all winter for. So this is important because these muscles actually run from the front of your spine down into your hip. So that can really allow for better spinal mobility and hip mobility. So what I want you to do is up nice and tall here. We're looking for a stretch in front of our down leg here. I want you to think about tilting your pelvis back, back. like this by tightening up your core, squeezing your butt muscles, and tucking your tail between your legs. Okay, so I should feel it here. Yep, and you and might. In the quads. Yep, and to get a little bit more, you're gonna bring up this arm and tilt away from it. And that should oh, open yeah. this up even more. So I have people usually hold this for about 30 seconds, and then I'll have them come out of it, maybe do the other side, do a few sets of that. But that helps us when these get short, that's where we can get hurt. It also puts pressure on your back yep. too, because it, it does lock up your hip. Yep, so if that muscle is tight, it's essentially giving a, a front force for your spine to move forward with anything that you're doing in an upright position. So if you're thinking about, you know, doing a golf swing or even extending back for a tennis swing, then you're looking for this elongation. And if you don't have that length, then it's just causing a sheer force into your spine. All right, so back, side. Side, okay. We're talk, talking planks? We're talking side planks, yep. So a lot of different variations you can do with this. I usually start with the scaled down version of having somebody go onto their elbow and their knees. Okay, so here. So, yep, right there. And the big thing that we look for is that everything is rotated in line here and that we're really getting a nice lift up. Thinking about if there's almost like a string attached from your hip up to the ceiling that's pulling up here. Right. So we look for that and I'll usually have people hold that for about 10 seconds and then do more repetitions of that rather than long sustained holds. All right, if we wanted to really add to the, a bit of a degree of difficulty and focus <laughs> in on this. Yep, so a lot of different things we can do. One of them is what you're doing right now where you're lifting the leg up. I would just position it back towards me a little bit okay. here and you could hold that as an isometric or you could do leg lifts. Or even another thing you could do is if you stack your leg back down and then bring this arm up and you think about trying to rotate to the left and tuck that arm up underneath you there and then come back up and reach up to the sky. Yep. So that's where you're getting a little bit of that rotational motion that we look for in these spring sports. Okay. <laughs> I'm a little tougher now already. All right. So we've got the hip flexors. We've got the obliques, mm -hmm. the side. And also I really felt that in like the piriformis yep. and in the glutes. Yep, yep. Need a lot of glute firing for all of these sports too. Okay. A lot of hip stability. So back, side, and the part I hate, the front. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is actually gonna help to engage both the front and the back. Okay, so we're working a lot of different things with this, and it's a lot of people are familiar with this exercise. It's the bird dog. I put a little bit of a spin on it, and I make people hold it longer than what is typical. 
So we're, yep, we're going into this position. So we're looking for nice level position here, no arching of the back. And then I usually make people hold for 10 seconds here and then chin tucked, everything is elongated. And then I'll have you come in and even there, I'll have them not hunch so much but just make sure, yep, just to about there and then come back into it. So you're not really getting a rest break with this all that much, but you're doing about six to 10 repetitions and holding for 10 seconds on that. And obviously doing both, yeah, sides. both sides. Yep, yep. So an important cue to give with this is that we're getting some engagement of our front uh, deep core stabilizers there. And obviously with getting the arm and the leg to lift, we're working all of the posterior chain with it. What I've noticed is when I do that, sometimes I get lazy. I'm not engaging the yep. abs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm doing the stuff in through here, but I'm missing out on this. Yep. So you want to make sure that you're engaging the abs. hundred percent. Yep. Yep. All right. So are, is that, that's three to start with. Three to start. Good injury prevention. Have we got some extra credit? <laughs> one, one for the advanced? Sure. Absolutely. So if we want to really kick up our golf game a little bit and try to engage this hip stabilizer muscle, gluteus medius more. Which is where the power comes a from. A lot of power. It's not upper body. Yep. You look at, you look at uh, Rory, all these guys, it's the rotation, yep. right? Them being able to dissociate their hips from their torso to wind up that power and then unload on the ball really helps to get that trajectory and that distance to it. Right. So we can head over here and we'll go over that one. So with golf, we need a lot of stability in our hips, core, I've been saying this over and over, right? right? So if you think about the golf swing, you're really transferring your weight from one side and then onto the other. So you need to be able to have all of that power into one leg and go into the other. So we're gonna go into a split squat stance here mm -hmm. and I'm gonna have you go into- About 18 inches up. Or just yeah, about. so this box is 18 inches. So I'm gonna have you go into a split squat and then once you get to the bottom, you're gonna rotate to the left, and then you're gonna push the ball out even if you wanna get some more leverage on that. Yep. 10 reps on it? If they can. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and so the big thing we look for here is that the knee, Whoa, yeah, that's <laughs> no loss of balance, and that's the right. knee, Knee has to track straight on here, so we don't wanna see that going out or the hip rotating out with us. Keep our chin forward, head forward, or do we turn? You let your body turn, or you let your head turn with your body. Good. So I do notice that I really have to be careful where I position that foot from the beginning. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will try to toe that out so that they're able to rotate their entire hip over to the side, and then that just ends up losing some of that rotation and that coil that we're looking for as we're trans transferring our weight onto that lead foot in the golf swing. Same thing over here. Yep. Yeah, see, my right leg, much weaker than my left. This is where a lot of asymmetries can show their ugly face. Ooh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> I'm going to get it. Yep. So make sure you're getting a good torso turn here, not just with the arms. There we go. It's going to take a while to get the balance there. Yep. So again, this is when somebody's getting to the, those more advanced stages. They've gone through all the proper training and everything, and we're able to start working on these more advanced exercises, asking a lot more from the stability aspect. Lee, thanks a lot. You bet.